decision one you figured was coming out of Buffalo not the Dorsey part of it but just that somebody was mm -hmm. maybe going to have to take responsibility mm -hmm. for what the Bills have been putting as a product out on the field recently Ken Dorsey obviously with the Bills for quite some time now uh, moved up the ranks as Ryan Dable took off for uh, to be the head coach of the New York Giants took on that offensive coordinator role and now he no longer wears that hat mm -hmm. Peter the reaction you had when you found out that it was indeed Ken Dorsey that Sean McDermott turned to yesterday and said it's you, man. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure if this was going to happen yesterday or if this was going to happen at all this season. Maybe the off season they had received, but they ripped the Band-Aid off now. They still think they can win this thing. So they're 5-5, five and five, and this was like something has to change. And I'll tell you, it's different. I, I, I have spoken to people in Buffalo, and I have spoken to people in the Dorsey camp. Like, this wasn't some contentious, like, you're fired, get out of here. Okay. This was one of those where they're a small town in a lot of ways, and like the families all know each other. And Dorsey's been yeah. there from the whole rise up, and Dorsey and Allen have a long relationship. And it was kind of like, hey, this is what's going to happen. And Dorsey understood that something had to happen. And now he moves on. And it's like, Joe Brady, get into that catbird seat. Like, it's your shot now. Now, Joe Brady, of, Joe Brady, of course, had this meteoric rise to stardom at LSU in the one year with Burrow and Chase and Jefferson. And then was like the youngest offensive coordinator ever and was blown out of Carolina because that didn't work. He's been with Buffalo the last couple of seasons. He's been there with the other. It's, hey, this guy's gone, you're up, and they are looking for the Bills to still, and they as being Buffalo fans, Buffalo, you're, to still be relevant. Like, this isn't a white flag by any means. If anything, firing Dorsey now is their sign to the fans that we still believe that we think we have to rip the Band-Aid off now and still get this thing done before it's too late. They have this stretch coming up. We highlighted it yesterday, Jason. Yeah. It's Eagles, mm -hmm. okay? Bye. Mm -hmm. And then it's Chiefs and Cowboys. You lose those three, you're done. Like, see you later. We'll see you. And we might have a, an entirely different crew we're talking they about. They also got the Jets first in their defense, who they've already lost to. Yep. Precisely. They play the Jets this weekend, who they lost to without Rodgers, yeah. who went down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On, and I was like, Zach Wilson, go. Yeah. Um, I don't think Ken Dorsey is fully to blame for this season. I okay. don't think Ken Dorsey fumbled the ball. Uh -huh. I don't think Ken Dorsey uh -huh. was the one who couldn't get the special teams right. I do think someone had to take the fall, and it's Dorsey. So now, hey, Leslie Frazier, you're gone. Dorsey, you're, you're gone. gone. At some point, it's, yeah. what are we doing here? But you know what? They're trying to salvage the season, and they think that that's going to be the change. We'll see. Yeah, he was a scapegoat. It's crazy because when you say, like, something had to happen, if they don't have 12 guys on the field, if they don't go blitz zero at the end of that game and allow the Broncos to come down, kick the field goal, and win the game, does something still have to happen? Does Ken question. Dorsey have to be fired? So that's kind of my question mark because some of the issues that took place was Sean McDermott calling the blitz zero and then ultimately head coach, special team coach, that has nothing to do with Ken Dorsey. And when you look at him being fired, you look at his offense, yes, it hasn't been as prolific as it has been the last few seasons. But at the same time, it's hard for an offense to put points up on the board when you continue to turn the ball over. You just mentioned that they have to play the Jets next, and that was a game that they already lost without Aaron Rodgers on the field. And a large reason they had to was because of the amount of interceptions that Josh Allen threw in that game. So when you say, where's the blame, and Ken Dorsey had to go on his offense, is this that in the third? At the same time, if the Buffalo Bills stop turning the ball over, they're able to win more games. There's nothing that beats you faster than giving the team, giving the other team the ball. And they did that on the first play of the game, the last one, when James Cook fumbled the ball. So you look at this and you look at Ken Dorsey, and you just mentioned Leslie Frazier as well. From the end of that 2022 season, Frazier's gone, and now before the next season's even over, the offensive coordinator is gone. To me, you say, all right, they feel like they can still salvage the season. This is full-on panic mode to me. This is the bank teller in, in the bank, and some people walk in, and all yeah. of a sudden you're nervous, and you think something's about to go down, sure. and you just reach underneath, and you hit that quick panic button <laughs> of just in case. <laughs> to me, that is the Buffalo Stop. Bills season right now. We're trying to – we're looking around and just like, who's going to find a way to get this thing back going? Joe Brady, is, is that the guy that's now going to rise up and they're going to put up 40 points a game? Are we – Super confident in that? What, why are you so worried those people are going to rob the bank? They're just they're depositing their paycheck. What you was know, it about them? I'm like, God, I'm triggered you, you by this. You never case. know. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, don't hit the panic mask. button. Uh, <laughs> I, I actually, I think if they had 11 guys on the field for that field goal, I think Dorsey would still be like, yeah. yeah. I do. It's The ingredients are really good. The food is not good. That's the job. Like, cook. <laughs> there is no reason, interceptions, fumbles, otherwise, that a team with Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs and James Cook and a first-round rookie tight end that they probably didn't need to draft and gave to Dorsey anyway, 
has gone six straight games without scoring 30 points. This is not just the Broncos thing. Yes, they had eight points at halftime against a team that gave up 70 points. <laughs> six straight games without 30. Allen's interceptions are up since Dorsey took over. Allen's rushing attempts are way down. The offense is kind of broken. It's stagnant. It's not anything that we fell in love with a couple years ago. It's not why they are everybody's offseason favorite. It's not why they're on the Madden cover. And you might be like, well, that's Allen's fault. He shouldn't throw. Of course it's Allen's fault. You're not firing Josh Allen. Josh Allen's the organization, all right? Coordinators, it's very simple. Score points or get the hell out of here. That's it. That's that's all it is. It's a bottom line business. You don't have the luxury of being the head coach. And McDermott has a lot of luxuries right now. But he worked his way to get there. He used to be a coordinator. Mm -hmm. Teams wouldn't score on him because that's how he got the job. The, the Ken Dorsey offenses are not scoring. Guys, they're 5-5. Five and five. This is not, eh, we're lazy 5-3, and three, we'll figure it out. It's not his first year here. It is not working. Josh Allen doesn't look like the same player. I think this is uh, the right move because, by the way, you're panicking. You're about to go 5-6 and six this weekend and then 5-7, and seven, and then you're the laughing stock. and let's talk about the draft. You had to do something. Yeah. You had to. You're not benching Stephon Diggs. You're not benching Josh Allen. The only move at this point was to make a change on offense, and I bet they're rejuvenated as hell, and I bet Josh Allen runs his ass off next week. I really do think it's the right move. I love Dorsey, of course. I grew up Dorsey. <laughs> I don't celebrate it. I think they had to do it. You fully buy into the Josh Allen bounce back experience too. Like you think when he is down and out, like he Usually. comes back with a vengeance. So Normally we'll everyone's see. like, he sucks, too many yeah. receptions. Then yeah. he'll have five touchdowns and 400 yards. Right. But we've been waiting for that for yeah. a month now. It hasn't yeah. happened. It's curious you say the last six, the Bills haven't amassed 30 points. Six in a row. The Ravens started the season that way. They were having a hard mm -hmm. time having Lamar Jackson get over 250 yards. They were having a hard time scoring 30 points. It took a second for the Todd Munkin offensive coordinator experience to click in there, but he was brand new. He was bringing a new offense. This is a new coordinator. This was an offensive experience yeah. with the Bills that had a standard that people were putting in a Super Bowl, winning a Super Bowl. For the last few years, this should not have downshifted the way that we have seen it from an offensive experience. Um, Peter, it's curious that you say the thing, too, as well, about, like, they think they can get it back on track. We had a conversation about the Ravens again yesterday and how if they fix things, they can just get to January. But sometimes that's not good enough. And the Bills must have a standard here to not just make it to January. Like, is there a belief in the building that there are the, the, the tools are there? It's just that the way the tools are being utilized, that was like the general issue. Because to your point, it kind of goes, looks at Sean McDermott as well. Sure, I think there is. I think they still believe that, wait, in, in August, when we were at St. Mm -hmm. Fisher's, like, we we believe. Like, we could, like that's, we're all still here. Uh, curious thing with Joe Brady, there's a cool story there, too. I mean, he was the hottest name. People, he interviewed for head coaching jobs when mm -hmm. he was 30. The hottest name in football. And was fired quietly, and then I was a quarterback's coach, and it's been mm -hmm. unheard of mm -hmm. for the last two years. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, hey, you've got Josh Allen, one of the premier talents in the league, and everyone's looking at you to fix this thing. Mm. Is he up for that challenge? Yeah. yeah. We'll see. Can I personalize this for you? You have a relationship with Ken Dorsey. Yeah, He's on your podcast. You yeah. spent a lot of time talking to him. Are you pissed right now? Is he a fall guy? Was McDermott no, just no? No, I think this is the business they sign up for. Uh -huh. And this was, the, to your point, six straight games, not scoring 20. And you know when you're court. He interviewed for a head coaching job last year. Did he? Ken Dorsey gets fired. He interviewed for the Carolina job. I mean, it's uh -huh. not like this guy's a clown around the league. Like He's no, still very sure. respected. Um, yesterday, I saw a lot of... You know, Twitter is an ugly place usually, but a lot of people being like excited, like showing him throwing the yeah, iPad yeah, yeah. and all thing. Like, they did a lot of great things under Ken Dorsey. Mm -hmm. He was a quarterbacks coach when Dable yeah. was the OC. Right. So, like, yeah. yeah, I mean, this 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 sucks. So this sucks. Josh he's Allen, got, he's got a family, he's got a wife. Yeah. Of course, I mean, it all yeah. sucks. But, but you don't think game. this is an injustice? Like you're nah. fighting back. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. I think it's understood. If you're a Bills fan, something has. This to happen. is not about the Broncos game, you guys. This yeah. started. They scored 14 against the Giants. Yeah. Like right. the, the Giants defense, we just saw it last weekend. It, this I think this has been going on for six weeks, maybe kind of all season. So to Kyle's point, the Josh Allen thing is real. You're not going to fire your franchise quarterback, right. uh, but he has not played up to the standard that everyone expected Josh Allen so far this season. It's been a roller coaster. Uh, the fact that he leads the NFL in touchdowns, but he also leads the NFL in giveaways, a list in which he exists with Desmond Ritter and Mac Jones on. That's not where you want Josh Allen to live. Jason, if you're in that building, do you have a conversation, if you're Sean McDermott, with Josh Allen about this first and say, hey, what's going to be, what's going to put you in the best headspace and physical space moving forward? I definitely think you had, I'm, I'm sure he had that conversation with Josh Allen before the Ken Dorsey news hit. I don't know if he's asking him his opinion on it, but probably just letting him know, hey, we're going to go with a change here. Joe Brady's going to be taking over. This is the plan moving forward. And I think for Josh Allen, everybody keeps talking about his interceptions and this, that. That's who he is. Part of his game is it. that he's 
going to throw interceptions Always. as he takes chances because he truly believes in his arm and he believes in the guys that are out there. Now, whether that's acceptable or not to you, that's up to the Buffalo Bills. I think the tough thing with that quarterback position, we did it with Dak Prescott last year. We talked about his interceptions and this, that, and the third. Dak Prescott gives the Dallas Cowboys the best chance at winning week in and week out. For the Buffalo Bills right now, there's no question Josh Allen gives them the best chance to win. So I don't think there's a conversation where now you're sitting Josh Allen down saying, hey, we can't turn the ball over. You're trying to figure out ways that with the turnovers to still put up enough points to win football games because I don't see now Joe Brady coming over and all of a sudden his interceptions just go way down. That's always going to be a part of his game. To me. This is also considering the AFC East as an entirety. The season has just been ripe for the taking and the Bills could have run away with it had they had their heads on straight to start the season, but it's still up for grabs across the board.